I'm going to share something with you guys that uh, the Lord's put on my heart. And I'm going to go ahead and let you be seated because it's longer than I expected. Um, I really feel like this has really ministered to me. And if you're somebody here today and either you're going through something or, or and I want the band to stay because we're going to worship. We're going to sing another worship song. But if you're going through something... I don't care if it's a health condition, it's a home condition, it's a life condition, or if you have a family member, you feel like you worry about them. I feel like that this is going to be for you, okay? Second Chronicles chapter 20. It's the story about Jehoshaphat. It says, you guys forgive me for my name calling, it's not the best. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, with, and with them other besides Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Three armies come to attack Jehoshaphat. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, he sa they said, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazen Tamar, which is in Gindi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. See, they went to ask the Lord for help. How many has ever been there? You didn't know what to do, so you went to the Lord and you asked for help. Please forgive me if I cry. <laughs> As y'all know, we, Charles and I have been there. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over the kingdom of heaven? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, and gavest to thee seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein. And have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword judgment, or pestilence, or famine, all those things, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our afflictions that thou wilt hear and help. He hears you. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us as inheritance. Listen to this. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know what we do, but our eyes are upon you. Always have your eyes upon the Lord. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mat Mataniah, a Levite of the son of Ash, Asva came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation, and he said, Hearken ye, all Judah. I want you to listen to this. Ye and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. 
Here's another point. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah of Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord thy God will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites stood up and praised the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. I'm bringing a point here. I want you to hear this. And they rose early in the morning, and they went forth into the wilderness. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall be established. Believe in his prophets, so ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. He sent singers out. And that should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army. They went out before the army, y'all, singing praises right there with the army in front of them. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. The Lord did that. For the children of Ammon, Moab, stood up against inhabitants, Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made it to the end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. He turned them against each other. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies that fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Listen. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, you know, the golds, the silvers, all the goods, when, he come, when they come to take the spoil of them, they found among them abundance, both riches and with the dead bodies, the precious jewels when they, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. I'm making a point here. And there were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much, so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves before the Valley of Baraka, means blessing. For there they blessed of the Lord, therefore the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka, the Valley of Blessings, unto this day. They returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in their forefront of them to go again Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord hath made them rejoice over their enemies, and they came to Jerusalem with with psalteries and harps and trumpets, instruments, y'all. I'm telling you, it's about praise. Listen. And the fear of God was on all the kingdom of those countries when they heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For God gave him rest round about. God did it. Jehoshaphat said, he had three armies coming to wage war against him. He goes to the temple and he cries out, but now here we are, there's three armies coming at me, God. Three of them, how can we face them? We cannot, but our eyes are set on you. Today, set your eyes on him and God will fight your battles. We have to have an eye connection with God. The Spirit came on Jehaziel, and he told him, he said, this is what the Lord said, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. He says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Just because it looks like it's a big old thing coming at you, do not be discouraged. 
no matter how big the picture looks. Can someone say amen? God will fight your battles. Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing the Lord and to praise him for his splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. When you don't know what to do, set your eyes on the Lord. The battle is not yours, but God. Whew. Let me go right here. I want to save this one part, point for last. You see, God is bringing a praise back to his people. God wants to bring victory back to his people. It says, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are strongholds in people's lives that we know. And it is time that they are brought down for good. See, the, e the reason why the enemy wants to silence the voice of praise in the church is because for thousands of years, the enemy has suffered the defeat of the sound of a praising church. Just like in the story of Jehoshaphat. I'm telling you today, you are getting your voice back. You are getting your praise back. You are getting your sound back. You are getting your fight back. I declare that the enemy is terrified of the sound of the praise that is inside of you today. Our enemy can be defeated by a song and a sound while the world is wages of all these battles, we can fix our eyes on him. That's why the enemy wants the church to be silent. That's why he wants the people in the pews to be quiet. That's why he wants it to just look like a little show. Because there's power in the sound of the generation of praisers who trust that God is going to fight their battles for them. The part that says, when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against them. And this morning, God said, sing and praise unto the Lord. He will set ambushments. The moment that they started singing and praising is when God set ambushments to destroy the enemies. I'm telling you, he's telling you this very moment. Listen, I want you to raise your hand. Have you ever battled something or you're battling something? I don't care if it's physically, mentally, emotionally, maybe something of your family that you've been worried about, something that's been bothering you. I want you to raise your hand. This very moment, there's been something going on in your life. Raise your hand. I know it. It's, it's all of us. There's something. Either it's a family member we stay concerned about. I don't care. Listen. Sing and praise unto the Lord. He will set ambushments against the enemy that's trying to attack you or anyone around you. Praise. Someone say hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I want to read a vision. I was taken up to a courtroom of heaven, and in front of me a really large throne. God the Father seated on it to the right was Jesus. I saw of these angels that were pacing. They were pacing around back and forth in the room, and they had all of this pent-up energy, and they were really tense. 
And all of a sudden, I saw God stand up from his throne, and he walked with confidence across the room, and he looked over the balcony of the heaven, and he pointed down at the earth, and he said, the verdict is no more delay. Immediately when the Lord said this, I saw these double doors fling open, and all of these angels flew out. And this is the reason why they were ready to go. Because in the courtroom of heaven, I heard this loud rumble and realized it was the prayers of the saints coming to the throne. And he made a decree. How many praying saints are in here today? How many of you have been praying? And I'm going to tell you right now, I want to declare over all of you. You're coming into an era of no more delay. Someone say, no more delay. In this season, you are entering no more delay. I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, close your eyes. Lift up your hands. We're in this era right now. No more delay. We decree in the name of Jesus, the church is entering into a season of no more delay. We declare that families that love the Lord, they're entering into a season of no more delay. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm pulling you into that season. I'm pulling you into that season. Hallelujah. I'm pulling you into the past season of being stuck. I'm declaring over your life. Hallelujah. I'm declaring it over your life. Heaven is shouting, the verdict of your life is no more delay. Come on, someone give them a hand clap this morning. Woo, hallelujah. It's the praise, people. It's the praise. The church is raising. The church is raising up a praise. Hallelujah. I want to sing a song. We're going to stand up again. We're going to stand up and we're going to praise the Lord this morning. I brought a new song today. Come on, I want you to declare. I want you to worship. We're entering in this new era. There's no more going back. No more going back now.